Tell me if I was Kanye, would you be Kim K? We travel the world in private planes, make friends with Beyonce, and move to LA. If I was Kanye, would hey, Candy from Bless Life. As you can tell from the title, this is all about the new Kardashian show on Hulu and some things that I kind of found out after watching it, I kind of have become a little bit obsessed with Khloe Kardashian, her exercises, how she, I didn't know that she'd lost all this weight. Evidently, she's had a miracle makeover. She's lost a lot of weight. She's changed her lifestyle. I think um, she looks absolutely fabulous. And I think that I was really impressed with her in particular in the new Hulu series. I think that if one thing they did right this time is it's obvious they took control of the show and a lot of the storylines, a lot of the fighting and drama and that was like so fake. <laughs> I think they said, we don't wanna do that anymore. And so it's a different series. It's a different, um, whole vibe and feel to it uh in season two i've there's been two see, two shows and i haven't seen scott so i think they got rid of even his negativity which i think is really good um and i'm not the biggest courtney fan but go courtney if she had anything to do with that because yes your whole life um should not every action that you do in your entire life after you break up with somebody should not be, well, what is that person going to think or feel or say? So I think that that was really interesting. Um, let's start off, I that I got my, my fake eyelashes on in honor of the Kardashians. Although, and I'm talking in particular Kim and Chloe, who Chloe is like, could be a fashion icon for me. Um, they wear a little bit wispier than this. I don't know if they put on the individual or they have due, due to the strips. I have no idea. <laughs> I should look that up. <laughs> what false eyelashes does Khloe Kardashian and Kim Kardashian wear? Because they do seem to wear a very similar wispy um, pair. And I really, really like them though. I like that look personally. I There are some other people that I follow that I really, really like them, but they look like they have tarantulas on their eyeballs because their false eyelashes are so thick. So um, I kind of like that wispier look. I think it's, I don't know. I just like it. For me, I think it's a good look. So I'm wearing that and I'm wearing makeup. For you girls that are like me that, are pale skinned and you um, have that blue tone to your skin and you're very fair and you have a hard time wearing warm palettes, eyeshadow palettes, because they go orange. Um, for example, oh, what was the name of it? The one that everybody raved about and everybody had two years ago. I got it and it just turned, everything looked orange on me, orange, orange. So, but I do have this ColourPop and it's the Going Coconuts and I'm almost out of it. You can tell I'm hitting pan, but this is a really good cool tone. This color here is a little bit warm and this color here is a little bit warm and this top one. But these three are beautiful, cool tone browns. And sometimes it's very hard to find in palettes. And so if you want to look glittery and glamorous, um, this is an excellent palette for that. So that's what I did my eyes with. And um, all is a tribute to the Kardashians. <laughs> in fact, I'm in total black. Let me show you, let me step back and show you my outfit. Um, let's see, let's see, how can I do this? Um, I am in, I don't have any good American jeans, but I have American Eagle black jeans. And this is just a black simple top. And it's very monochrome. Now, if I had a pair of black 
sandals or uh, boots. That's what I would be in, but I don't have them, so I'm not wearing them. But that would be a tribute to their monochrome love of black. <laughs> but, okay, so let's get into the series. And Chloe, in particular. I was really impressed with how Chloe handled herself with the Tristan situation, having a baby with him. I think that I don't know if I would be that nice. And I was very, very impressed with everybody this season didn't seem to um, have that mean tone that they used to have. Kind of makes me wonder why Robert, especially now in season two, seeing what season one was like, hasn't wanted to show up or isn't showing up. Uh, like I said, I'm kind of happy that Scott Disick's not there. I'm kind of happy that Caitlin's not there. I think that um, they were, I, well, I always thought Caitlin, when, when Caitlin was Bruce, I thought Bruce was boring and I don't know, I thought Caitlin was boring and self-absorbed. So <clears throat> I'm kind of glad that they're not around. Uh, I hope that Jonathan Cheban isn't around so much. I saw him a little bit. I don't like him. And um, I'm not like, I haven't watched every season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, every single um, show. I don't, like I said, I had I had no idea that Chloe looked so fabulous until I tuned in. I thought that she absolutely picked the most perfect dress for season two for their pictures when they're all in black. And she's got this lace um, skin tone dress. And it just, especially compared to the rest of them, I just thought, well, she really is um, bringing her A game there. And I think that it was very interesting. I do think that there was some fake drama. I think that, of course, they started the show with, what's the new, um, with the sex tape thing again. And I think that that was just kind of all made up just for, I don't know, whatever, to bring back the vibes of the beginning of the old show. I don't know what it was, but I think that that was a little bit drama that was created and faked. I do believe, and I do believe that Kim was particularly, I think her remark on Saturday Night Live about why she broke up with Kanye, that it was his personality. I think that that was cruel and mean and I don't think it I think it went for the juggler and I don't think it was very nice and becoming I think that she should have listened to Amy Schumer a little bit <laughs> about her jokes but you know and it, this is the thing everybody of course told her she knocked out of the park and was fabulous and wonderful and everything but I think that um there were a couple jokes that were mean spirited and I don't you know like mean spirited jokes so, um, I was disappointed in that. I was loved, love, love seeing her in bright pink. That was a surprise because, like I said, I don't watch them and follow every single thing that they wear and do, but I had honestly can't remember a time when I saw her in bright pink before. So it was like, yeah, she's stepping out of the box. Now, will we ever see a Kardashian in Love Shack Fancy? I don't think so. Would I like to see a Kardashian in Love Shack Fancy? In particular, Chloe, because she's now my favorite fashion icon from all of the girls. Um, yeah, I would. I think Kendall might be, just because she's a model, she might um, get asked to do a girly Love Shack Fancy um, photo shoot and do something like that that way so we might see Kendall in something like that but the rest of them no I don't think we're gonna see any of them in that um another thing that I thought was really fascinating and if you go back and you look at Kris Jenner's pictures when she was in her late 30s early 40s um Courtney because she's and she said that it's because they were going through in vitro and doing all of that she looks so much like her mom. There are times when Courtney like turns her head or does something or makes an expression and I'm like, oh, it's Chris, it's Chris. She looks just like her mom. And so I think that was fascinating. Seeing their houses 
was absolutely um, amazing, especially um, Chris's new house and Chloe's new house. But Courtney's house, I'd never seen Courtney's house. Courtney's house is beautiful. Kendall's house is very pretty. I, it's interesting enough, you haven't seen much of Kylie's house. And uh, let's see, who's the other one? Courtney, oh, Kim, Kim. And I had seen pictures of Kim's house. In fact, at one point in time, she had like a marble top long table in her dining room that was a white marble with black. And then I think it had just chrome legs or silver legs or silvery metal legs, whatever the material was. And I used to think that's the most amazing. And I was actually just Googling um, pretty mar marble tables and hers came up and I was like, oh, and I was like, ooh, you know, <laughs> do I want to copy Kim Kardashian <laughs> on anything? And um, so, yeah, the, seeing their houses is amazing and seeing the difference in their houses, it kind of, Kim's house kind of really has that zen, minimalistic vibe and it kind of is appealing to me. I'm older than, Kim, I, I'm younger than Chris, but I'm older than the girls and so I'm like in between and so I kind of am more towards the era of Chris where you have a lot more nicky nacky stuff and like if you saw her beautiful china cabinet cupboard she has what probably 10 designer cap cabinet cupboards uh, and ch china patterns that are designer and you know high high end and it was really really cool seeing those because I'm really into china my grandmother worked in shenango pottery and china was like the big thing for our family, everybody, all the girls when they got married, got a set of china um, from my grandmother before she retired. And well, the ones that got married before she retired, I was still a child when she died, so I didn't get any, but my mother had china from herself. Anyways, um, so I've always been into china, so seeing that all the different china patterns was really pretty, but I, I was like, this kind of excessive and when you compare like Chris's designs to Kim's designs, you can definitely tell the age and the the whole idealism because I think minimalism is really, really getting big right now. And I think that a lot of people are trying to get away from the clutter and they don't want 101 different knickknacks in their house. And I think that that's, um, I'm starting to tend a lot closer to that and so, <clears throat> I mean, I still do like a pretty knickknack here and there, but you know, I don't, every surface does not need to be covered with things. And I think that that's interesting. And of course, seeing their closets is absolutely fascinating. Um, I don't know if I had a favorite episode in season one, but I really, um, one thing that I would say from Kim is stop being a victim of some of these big fashion names. Just because somebody a fashion name is famous, if they make something but ugly, it's but ugly, and don't put it on. When I saw the Vogue shoe that she, in some of the clothes that she was putting on, and they were listing off the names, I'm like, I I, I really don't care what name it is. It's ugly. <laughs> it's ugly, Kim. Don't wear it. Don't put it on. You had you had an opportunity to pick anything you wanted, you know, in the Vogue Hall of Fashion closet. And, you know, from Carrie, we all know that that's every girl's dream. And I, I just think that everything was really modern. I do get that they wanted to pick a modern thing, but like when she was on top of that car and she had that ugly, huge, gigantic hat on, it just, I mean, it was like, Kim, no, no, pick something pretty. So, and then there was also when Prada sent her stuff. I don't know. I'd, I've never seen Prada clothes. I've only seen Prada shoes and bags before. So, you know, but those jackets and stuff, they were hideous. And, you know, you've got, you've got all the money in the world and you've got every designer at your disposal. And if somebody sends you something hideous, don't wear it. Just don't wear it. Say no. Um, 
And so I think that that is something that, you know, even nowadays, it can translate down to normal women that just because, and you see this <clears throat> in the Instagram and all the influencers and stuff like that, just because they say it looks good or just because they put it on because they got paid to put it on doesn't mean you have to put it on if it's ugly. So don't do it. Don't just say no to the ugly clothes. Okay. So that was my thing. And then also the last thing, season two, the first one was really weird because, you know, Chloe explained everything about, no, she's, she has this kid by, um, in vitro with, um, a surrogate to, <clears throat> so that's why you, people never saw her pregnant, but she had this second kid with Tristan. He talked her into it, probably, you know, trying to, um, get her more committed to him and then and I don't even I'm this is how totally out of the loop I am I don't even know if they're if she's gotten back with him since they had the second kid together or she's dating somebody else um so you can fill me in on all that but I thought it was really weird that they did that one and then they go back six months to when Kylie has a baby instead of just putting everything in order I think it was a little bit confusing um, especially for people like me that don't watch every single thing on and about them. But I think that you do get to see um, some interesting views of their lives. And I think that it's interesting and you can learn a lot. You can really, really learn a lot about, like, they don't let haters stop them. They don't let anybody stop them if... <clears throat> If when their show started, however many years ago it started, um, if they had let people stop them, every time somebody said something bad, they stopped doing whatever it was that they were getting complaints about, they wouldn't be where they are today. And I think that <clears throat> whatever can be said about them, and I know that they've done some shady things, I know that, um, or they've been accused of doing some shady things. Kylie was accused of um, falsely stating how much she was worth to get on some TV show stuff like that, or get on some magazine or something like that. And I, I know that there's been some things that, um, they did that probably is not the best things that maybe a person should or would do to get where they're going. But at the same time, they don't let things stop them. And I think that that's important when negative things happen in our lives. I know that I'm um, more a person that I have let a lot of negative things that have happened in my life stop me and paralyze me. And I think that you can't do that. You've got to keep going forward no matter what it is, no matter what the situation you're in is. And I think that that's one of the big things <clears throat> that I saw in this new show. And I think that now that they're older and they're more mature and they understand how the business works, they were able to rewrite the script and um, they're telling things from their perspective now and they're not having to just do things <clears throat> like they did for E, just for drama. And I think that that's really good. I think that um, they're not perfect people. Uh, they're going to keep making mistakes. There's still going to be things in the tabloids and there's going to be more scandals, I think, <laughs> more weddings <laughs> and more divorces, maybe even, hopefully not. But I think that you're definitely going to see a lot more um, of them and I don't think that they're going to go away anytime soon. So, but I'm very, very impressed with Chloe. She's become my number one. Kardashian. I never had a number one Kardashian before, so this is kind of like a first. Uh, I mean, I kind of liked Kim, but then I kind of didn't like Kim. <laughs> uh, for things she did and said. But, um, and I think that they're all good. I think that we can all have personalities that I think there are people that like me, and then they don't like me, and then they like me, and they don't like me. So, you know, that's just life. But that's kind of my take on the Kardashians. I don't know, I kind of rambled. But anyways, 
if you want to look thin, dress all in black. If you um, <clears throat> want to look glamorous, put on some fake eyelashes and just enjoy the day. No matter what anybody else says or does, just enjoy the day and go on and do what you want. Bye for now. Big hugs. Have a great day. Bye.